Recognize the deposit that the God of the Bible has placed in their child or children. There is a responsibility that's placed on the shoulders of every parent to recognize the deposit that the God of the Bible has placed in their child or children. That's why parents need to be saved. I hold that you cannot fulfill the role of parenting without Jesus. You can parent them and teach them how to make A's throughout their academic years. You can parent them in a manner where they may grow up to become the president of the United States of America. You can be such a skilled parent, a helicopter parent, or whatever kind of parent, such a, a doting parent that your child, by the standards of the world, can't help but do well. But unless you help them discover why God allowed them to be born in the first place, you haven't done your job. We haven't done our job as parents. And it takes God to help us discover the deposit that he has placed in our children. Our text tells us, and I want you to hear me well, that his parents saw that he was a proper child. The word proper literally means beautiful. Moses was a beautiful little boy. Let me, let me, let me, let me say this. As we study, we will see that God did not, the text does not tell us that God revealed to Moses' parents that he was a proper child, but that they recognized that he was a proper child. You won't read where the Lord visited him and the Holy Spirit showed up at night and said to Moses' mother, you have a proper child. Or to Moses' dad, who was a Levite, your son is a proper son. But their skill in parenting Enable them to see that they had someone special on their hands. God bless my mother. When you give her a hand. Mama, I was just telling them about my red rose. That you keep it possible for me to wear. When you become a parent. And this won't fly well today. So you can't be selfish and be a parent. See, we have me first dads and me first moms. We wonder why the children give us such, such a hard time. We have parents today who are consumed. I'm talking about parents with little children. 
I mean, once they're grown, they're grown. But who are consumed with pursuing their own careers. I told you it wouldn't fly well. <laughs> consumed with their own best interests. Millions upon millions of dollars are being made now because they're being dropped off the kids at incubators at younger and younger ages while parents pursue other things. And we wonder why We wake up one day, and where little Johnny used to be seated at the table, there's a drug dealer. Or a hoodlum. Someone you do not recognize. Not in every case, but in many cases, it was that the child was raised by parents who in many cases physically was, were present, who meant well, but in many cases were blind, who simply could not see while holding their own baby, looking their child in the eye, couldn't see the deposit that God had placed in that child. I am preaching better than you are responding. Yeah, I've been at it long enough to know I, I know good preaching. Say amen. I don't need confirmation to know when I'm preaching. Parenting. Oh my. The text says they noticed that he was beautiful. Now let me show you how uh, this, this guy was very special because Acts chapter 7 and verse 20 tells us this about uh, the baby Moses. Acts 20 and 7 says that in which time Moses was born. Underline this for those of you who, who write in your Bible. I write in mine. mine. says, and was exceeding fair. Reading from the King James Version. King James says that Moses was exceeding fair. But if you study from the, the New Testament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the American Bible Union Version, better known by the acronyms ABUV, and also the modern language Bible, the New Berkeley version of the modern English, known as the Burr, B-E-R, they render King James and was exceeding fair. They render this particular phrase as was beautiful before God. Or beautiful. Moses was beautiful in God's sight. And then if we, um, as we take a look at this, we see that the Jerusalem Bible, which by the way is older than the King James. The Jerusalem Bible renders this particular passage that Moses was a fine child before God. The point is that Moses was not only beautiful and special in the eyes of his parents. Moses was unique in the eyes of God. John MacArthur said not only was Moses not, not only Moses' parents, but God himself had a special affection for this child. God loves every child 
that is born. God loves children at the point of conception. By the way, that's when life began. But Moses, at the point of conception, was special in the eyes of God. Matthew Henry said this about the baby Moses. He said, he was sanctified from the womb. And this made him beautiful in God's eyes. The point is that his parents had to see that there was something wonderful about this child. Let me issue another little caveat that even lends more to the greatness uh, of uh, Moses' parents and their responsibility, uh, parents, to simply see. And uh, it is this, Moses was not their only child. Now we, as parents, we love all of our children. If you only have one child, you love the one child. If you got two, you love two. If you got ten, you love them all. But everybody has a different deposit. Everybody has a different assignment. See, I'm hoping that that parent that is self-consumed, I'm hoping that while I'm preaching, you'll sober up and say, you know what? I need to redirect my focus because I need to see. Because let me tell you, many times the parents never see. And then we wonder why. We wonder why. The kid turns out the way that he did. I know for some of you this is hard to hear. They had to see. And they had to be able to see that each child was different. Moses was the baby. The elder, he had an older sister. Miriam, and an older brother, Aaron. Miriam was wonderful. Aaron was wonderful. Went on to become the father of the first priesthood, the Aaronic priesthood. But Moses was special. Can I get a witness? Now to understand and fully appreciate what Moses' parents did, we need to uh, look at the circumstances of Moses' birth. Because they had a real assignment. Now when I tell you what their assignment was, no other parent in here ought to say we parents have it hard. Because I'll tell you something, none of us on our worst day at parenting has had to parent uh, in the, with the opposition that Moses' parents faced. Moses' parents, praise the Lord, gave birth to Moses at a time. Where you really wouldn't want to give birth to children. See, because Moses' parents gave birth to him at the time where a wicked law had been passed. A law that made genocide legal is similar to abortion of our day. What was the law? Pharaoh had passed a law. And the law was that no Hebrew boy 
was allowed to live. That if the Hebrew women, not the Egyptians, not the Hicksaw Egyptians, not any of the Egyptians, but a racist law, and uh, but it was a racist, but the gender, the sex it affected was only the boys. Says, we do not want Hebrew boys uh, uh, to be allowed to live. Oh, it's in the Bible. Exodus chapter 1. And, uh, oh my. Verse 15 says, The king of Egypt spake unto the Hebrew midwives, of which the names of one was Sapphira, and the other was Pua. And he said, When you do the office of a midwife, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, that is, they will sit there to give birth, all right? If it be a son, then you shall kill him. Government sanctioned. Murder of innocent little Hebrew boys. Now, it was racism, but it was not color. Because the Hebrews and the Egyptians were all dark brown. So I don't want you to think color. But they didn't want the Hebrew people to grow in number. Because when a group of... Uh, Egyptians conquered, came to power. This was not the Egyptians that reigned when Joseph helped Egypt out. There arose a different group of Egyptians who didn't know Joseph, didn't appreciate what Joseph did for the Egyptian people. These people began to Look at the Hebrews with an eye of suspicion. And they said, you know, if we are ever invaded by a foreign enemy, the Hebrews may side with them. So we need to cut their growth. About like what Margaret Sanger, Margaret Sanger, Planned Parenthood, and the Democrat Party platform have done to black people. Before you turn me off, before you call me wrong, go read their party platform. And notice this. We were 13% 13, 13, uh, uh, 13 maybe of the population in 1960. Here we are in 2017. Still stuck around 11, 12, 13 percent with, percent with only people, only race in this country that doesn't grow. And the number one killer by us, of us, more than the five, fifth leading causes of death combined heart disease, murder, diabetes, cancer, you know. All them combined, the bigger killer than them combined of black people is abortion. Not the police. Abortion. And yet, I, I, I got to bring it up. And yet, with the two major parties, I got to bring it up. And only one have in its platform the full-throated support for the slaughter of the unborn, we are still loyal to our killers. Can't none of us stand Trump. 
But it was Hillary who received the Margaret Sanger Award. It was, can't stand Trump. I just don't like the way he talked. But it was Hillary who says, I'm for keeping abortion legal. Can't stand Donald Trump. But it was Hillary that says, I'm for a woman's right to choose. There is something wrong with us. Anytime you're a willing participant in your own demise, there's something wrong with you. Well, there are other issues, not to the person that's aborted. Everything starts with being born. Everything starts with birth. How many unborn babies that was aborted graduated from college? How many made it to the NBA? Since that's what we want. How many made it to the NFL? How many got a degree? None. If you don't see the light of day, you don't see anything else. We don't, we're, we're, we're the only race in this country that doesn't grow in number. Them Hebrews said, them Jews, the, the, the Egyptians, back to the text, said that uh, uh, these Hebrews said they're multiplying, they're outgrowing us. Right. So they may side with the enemy. So we're going to kill their boys. So here, here is the king with government sponsor, taxpayer fund. A midwife's right to choose. Right here in the Bible. And, uh, but thank God for these midwives. He said, now, if you see that it's a boy, kill him. But if it's a daughter, then, then, then she shall live. But why weren't, they, why weren't they afraid of the women? That's simple. Uh, because the man carried the seed. See, to kill a raise, you have to touch the women. You carry the egg. To kill a raise, all you got to do is you, you kill the man. That, that, that's who you kill. Get rid of him. See. Then the next child that comes out, if, if it's not from his seed, Right there. That changes the dynamics. I think I preach a little bit too real for some of you. That's what I think that I do. I think I think I drive it. I think I drive it home too 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 hard. And I'm trying. To, I'm working on changing my tone. I'm trying to get like the folk are when they're talking about uh, 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 dogs. You know, just 19 cents a month, and you can save an animal. An innocent animal every day in this country is being killed. Right? Now, how are you going to talk about an animal? So I'm not going to talk about saving an animal as long as we're killing human beings. I'm not going to give a dime. I'm not going to give a dime toward that. A dog. A dog can be saved. So maybe that's the way I need to preach to you. You know, if the Hebrews, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't, I don't work too hard on doing it the way I do it. Say amen. So... In a few minutes, I know what's going to happen. Some of the sens sensitive people, I'm going to hurt you little sensibility. You're going to grab your person. I understand. I understand. I understand. But come back. Come back. You're going to hear the truth again. And if, and I always say that now, if you've had an abortion and you've repented of your sin, God's forgiven you. And, and women, men are just as guilty of this. 81% of the time, if the brother would just support the baby, the girl would have the baby. See, we're, we're down there. We, we've seen the number of women who don't want to go through with it. And she with some thug with his fist ball up there, you better. So it's not, don't, don't you feel bad. But you still got to try to let me save the next one. And, and it would do me good in our lifetime. It, I mean, it would touch me before I die. Black population move up to, you know, maybe what, 13%? 14, you know, just one percentage point. The Hispanics now are 18, 17 to 18. And they just got here. 
but we don't grow. NAACP, I blame all of them. All the liberal organizations. They're why? Supporting liberal policies, they're bought, they're bought and paid for. And they have deceived and, and, and betrayed their own people. Well, nobody against abortion like Jesse Jackson until uh, 84, 83 or 84 when he ran for the office of president. presidency. In 77, nobody, no one could speak against abortion. He was our greatest voice. Yeah, Jesse. But when he needed that Democrat money to run, they told him, you got to drop that. And you know what he did? He dropped it and became a staunch supporter of abortion. He sold his people out. Now, I, I, I tell you what you do. All you have to do is just Google it. You'll see, what I, you'll see from 84 how his language changed. Then you check out my language. Been the same. I'm not running, but the same because God's truth never changes. Now, let me try to preach this right fast because I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, now he's getting too political. Here's the problem. Politics touch every part of our lives. So how do you ignore something that doesn't ignore you? The lawmakers, whatever laws they pass, they affect us. Well, I don't think you should mention it. You're going to have to live it. You're going to have to respond to it. It's going to, it's going to affect you. The lawmakers have power. They're, that's where the real power is. They're so powerful that the Bible said, pray for them. Pray for the king and leaders of uh, this world that we might live a quiet and peaceable life in godliness and honesty. And that word quiet doesn't mean mute. Quiet, quietness in this sense is prosperity. Quietness is being able to get, a, get ahead and, and, and live a good life and be blessed. Well, he says, pray for the politicians. Because they're the ones, more so than anyone else, who have the power to affect these things. We see the king of Egypt bringing in government instituted gender-based Suicide, uh, 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 genocide. But thank God for some good midwives. Thank you for watching God First with Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. To experience this message in its entirety, call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day. God First.